Welcome back to Maintenance Minute. I'm Jim V. Brock. In today's episode, we're going to show you step-by-step -step how to make a flat panel cabinet door. Welcome back to the wood shop, everybody. I'm Jim V. Brock, and today's video is the third video in a series of videos dealing with flat panel doors. And today we're going to build a cabinet door and it's going to be uh, made out of pine. And uh, it's going to have the same construction techniques of some of the doors that I've seen in my favorite big box retailers. So if you're thinking about building new cabinets for your wood shop or even cabinets for your home for that matter, today's video is going to be a great video for you. Okay, to get started with our project today, what I wanted to build first is the frame that actually mounts to the wall that the door will shut up against. Um, I'm going to build that frame out of pine. It is one and three quarters inches wide. So the first thing I want to do is take some pine boards that I have. These are actually boards that I bought at an auction um, and they've been out in the barn. So they're kind of dirty, but before the end of the project, we'll have them cleaned up and looking brand new. So I want to set my table saw at an inch and three quarters. And as always, the steps for setting up your table saw are going to be the same. The blade is made up of teeth going two different directions. One's going towards the fence, one's going outwards. You always want to set your tape and measure from the tooth that's facing the fence. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do an inch and three quarters. We're going to measure front and back of the blade. And then we're going to set the blade height. And in this case, I need to lower the blade just a little bit because I just want the teeth just coming up, the full tooth just coming up out of the, um, out of the warp piece. So I'm going to rip these down now and uh, we'll have some strips to go with. Okay, I'm over here at my compound miter saw, and what I want to do is 45 the joints on this. We're going to use a butt joint, and we're just going to do a 45 on these. And my length is 21 inches, so I'm going to take my tape, and I'll mark measure out to 21 inches. Make my mark on here, and my saw is already set to make the 45, so um, we'll just line it up. And make the mark. Now I need two of these, one for each side. So I'm going to rotate this around here, and um, you can use this pattern if you want to. But just remember which side you got to cut on that line whenever you do it this way. Okay, there it is. Our two upright pieces, and I'll repeat this process for the top and bottom. Okay, I brought my frame over here and I kind of pieced it together and I'm happy with the, uh, the bevels on here. So the next thing we're going to do is take my pneumatic nailer. Um, I got two inch finish nails in here and I'm going to just simply uh, tack this together and hold it nice and firm. Okay, and that is our frame. We'll set this aside, we'll sand it, and we'll build our door to go along with that. Okay, so now I want to cut out the rails and the styles for the door itself. The vertical pieces are called styles. The horizontal pieces are called rails. They're going to be an inch and a half in this case. So I'm going to set my table saw up the same way I did earlier at an inch and a half. And then I'm going to cut those strips. My upright styles are going to be 19 and 3 8 inches long. We're not going to fortify these because we're going to do a mortise and tendon here in just a minute. So I'm going to make two at 19 and 3 8. Now I'm going to cut my rails. I have to subtract the three inches because each of the upright styles is an inch and a half. That should make my measurement about eight and a half. Okay, I laid our door frame out on our, our other frame just to make sure that it's gonna look right and be symmetrical um, and to check my math. And it seems to all work out just fine. So the next step, we're gonna go over to the router and start cutting our mortises and tendons. Okay, if you've watched any of my videos at all, you know that I'm a huge fan of mortise and tendon joinery. There's different ways you can do it, but uh, my favorite way is to use my uh, radial arm saw and my router to do that. Now, I've already got this set up and I ran a test piece 
So if you look very closely here, you can see you made the marks. This is three quarter inch stock. I have a one quarter inch bit in my router. And if I set this up right, that router bit will go right down the center of that, leaving a quarter of an inch on each side and taking a quarter out of the middle. Why is this important? Because we're gonna use a quarter inch piece of plywood to go in there to make the panel. So it'll fit in there nice and tight, but still have the flexibility to expand and contract if it needs to. So I'm gonna take this and run it through just to check to make sure that it's right, because I don't wanna ruin my good pieces. So here we go. So there you can see that it is exactly a quarter inch on each side and a quarter right down the middle. So this is set up properly and it's going to work just fine. Okay, I ran one of our styles through the router and got a nice clean groove. And what's going to happen here is we'll be able to put our quarter inch piece of plywood firmly and gently right in there, but yet it'll still have enough ability to expand and contract with the changes in the weather. So this is going to work out really well. I'm going to cut the rest of my mortises. We're going to do one on the inside of each of the four pieces, and then we're going to cut our tenons. Okay, now we're going to make the male version of this joint called the tenon, and that's this right here. And I've got this saw set up. This is a radial arm saw. This is a great saw, by the way. If you get the chance to buy one of these, do it, because every good wood shop needs it. And I actually watched one of these sell at auction um, about a week ago, and it sold for $25. What a great buy. Anyway, I keep mine set up to make these tenons because um, the, the saw, you can raise it up and it'll come across on a, on a flat plane where your uh, compound miter saw um, comes down and, and cuts things all the way through. So this is a great tool for this. Now you can make these tenons on your router again, just reset it, or you can cut them on your table saw. Either way, I just prefer to use this radial arm saw. So what happens is you take, this is the mortise again that I just cut, and this is one of my rails for the new piece. And when we cut the tenons, these pieces will interlock just like that. And they will be really tight, really firm. This is a great joint. So um, learn how to make these. these. These are really, really good joints. I just can't say enough about them. Um, and this will be very strong too, by the way. So what I'm going to do is set that aside. That was a test piece. And now I'm going to actually cut my tenons on here for you. So just put it on. And there you have it. A nice tenon ready to be put inside of the mortise. Just like that. Okay, I've got all my pieces here and just want to show you that it how easily this all fits together. It puts them in there. We've got a nice good tight fit here. So I'm gonna put this in and then we're gonna take a measurement for our panel that goes inside of this, and we will cut it next. Okay, it's time to start working on the panel itself. I have a scrap piece of quarter inch birch that I used in a different project, and I figured out that I needed my piece to be eight and a half inches wide. If I do eight and a half inches wide, that's the exact measurement inside there. That'll be too tight. So I'm gonna back that off by almost an eighth of an inch, and I'll set my saw just like we've done um, a bunch of times before, and I'm gonna rip this down. We're going to rip it across at 16 and 7 eighths inches. And there's our panel. Now, since we've done all of our homework properly, our panel should slide right up in here, just like so. And when you put the bottom piece in, it ought to snug up just fine. Here's a tip for you. Now is the best time to sand the inside of this. You assemble that door and the hand sanding you gotta do here is gonna be rough. So I'm gonna clean those up real quick.
Okay, here's one of my favorite parts. We're getting ready to glue this up. So I'm gonna start with taking either one of my um, rails and we're going to glue this up. Now, only glue the tenon itself and the face of this. Do not put glue inside your mortise because you want that panel to be able to expand and contract and float around. So I'm just gonna run a nice generous little bead on all of these other surfaces on both ends of my tenon of my rail piece and you want just enough to where the glue will ooze out but not anymore so we're going to put this one in and these are good and tight fittings this time which is the way you want them and mind you this glue will set up very quickly and then we're going to slide the panel in And this will be unbelievably strong once it's set up. Okay, you can clean up your glue joints with a damp rag if you want to. Some people do, some people don't. Some think that it weakens a joint. I've never had any problems with it that way. But what I do want you to do is check this to make sure that it's laying flat. Um, I'm not looking for it to be level. I'm using the level to make sure that it is laying flat because you don't want it to have a cup or a warp in it. So it's doing really good. Um, at a minimum, leave this in the, in the clamps for 10 minutes or so. Um, I would say more like an hour or overnight. Um, if you're in a big hurry, leave it at least an hour. Um, I'm going to leave this overnight. Tomorrow we'll come back. We'll route the edges on it and sand it and attach it to our frame and it'll be ready for painting. So uh, we'll see you in the morning. Oh, welcome back. I've taken my door out of the glue clamps and made sure that it was laying flat on the table, and it is. So I started sanding on it off camera, um, and I've got pretty much my 80 grit sandpaper run done, um, but I'm not real comfortable with the um, square edges on here. You could leave this on there like that and have a mission style if you wanted to. Very popular in some of the older homes and even kind of making a comeback a little bit. But I'm going to round this edge off. So I'm going to fire up my router and uh, smooth that up just a little bit just to soften it just a touch. Okay, I got my piece clamped to my table to hold it. Um, I could run this through my tabletop router, but I keep it set up to do my mortises, so I don't really want to mess with that. Um, so I'm going to use my handheld router. Um, I've run a test piece just to make sure that I don't have my bit set too deep. And this is going to make a nice rounded edge closer to the prototype like I've seen in our big box retailer. So I'm going to be careful and I'm going to go around this. I'll have to change it around to do the other side. Okay, there you have it. I think I forgot to mention that that was a roundover bit that was in my router. I chose to use the handheld router because I like to show you as many different tools as possible. You could have done that on your desktop router table just as easy. I just didn't want to change out my mortise bit. Um, the next step in this will be to sand these. But guys, I think if you'll notice, you should be proud of your project right now. There's nothing wrong with the way these doors are going to work. Um, this particular frame represents the, the cabinet frame. If you were doing cabinets with this and your doors will go on here just, just fine. Obviously, your dimensions change for the different size cabinets you're going to do, but the construction principles are exactly the same. And if you've built this today along with me, you should be proud of your work because woodworking is fun and that's why you do it. Um, I'd like to hear your comments and see some pictures, if you can, of some of the projects that you've made based on this. I would enjoy that a lot. Be sure and look at my Facebook page. Uh, leave me comments on this page. But for now, we're going to go and put our hinges on, finish sanding it, and getting rid of it for paint. Okay, I got my sanding all done. And now what I've done is I've centered my door up on the frame. I've got my hinges laying there, and I'm ready to put the screws in on this side. So. We're going to keep it, try not to bump it. Okay, there we have it. I'm going to turn this over then, holding it together, and I'll be able to hold my, uh, put the first screw in, and then we'll be good to go for the rest.
And there you have it. There is our door, our cabinet door, fully assembled. When I get it to the job site, we'll simply use finished nails and attach it to the wall. Um, and then the painters will paint it. Now let me give you a little tip about painting. This was pine. Uh, you may or may not have built your project out of pine. If you build it out of something else, you probably aren't going to have the problem. Pine is notorious for knot bleed. I didn't uh, uh, didn't have any knots in this piece. I cut my, my stock out around the knots to avoid it. But if you've got a knot on here and you go to paint this white, that knot's going to bleed through there. My suggestion is paint it. Your primer color should be a color. Um, there's something about the pigment in the color that will uh, stop the knot bleed. Then you can paint it white if you want to. Guys, if you like these videos, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you really like this stuff, tell one of your friends and have them come over and subscribe to my channel. My Facebook page link is uh, in the comments. My wife's Facebook page is in the comments. She has custom creations. Um, we would love your feedback, so feel free to comment on this video. Feel free to comment on our Facebook pages. And again, like and subscribe us. We appreciate it a bunch. I appreciate you watching today. Have fun and woodwork often.